Hey folks, Hal Shirtliff with Camp Constitution and we are here in Manchester, New Hampshire and we are at Stark Park and even with my Boston accent I think I pronounced it properly and I'll just read the plaque here it says this 30 acre tract along the Merrimack River was the family farm of Revolutionary War hero General John Stark and his wife Molly when soldiers were stricken with smallpox at Ticonderoga the general sent them here to his farm to recover. General Stark returned here at the end of the war. He died in 1822 and is buried in the family plot, which we'll visit in a few minutes, in the park. The city of Manchester purchased this site from Stark descendants in 1891, and it was dedicated as a public park in 1893. And it's just a short distance from downtown Manchester, a beautiful little spot, and We'll take a, uh, a walk over to the grave site and also the beautiful statue. And folks, here is the grave site of John Stark. And let me read the plaque here. American Revolutionary War hero, Major General John Stark was born in Londonderry, New Hampshire in 1728. Upon his death in 1822, this gravesite on what was the site of the Stark family farm became his final resting place. The general's beloved wife Molly, who predeceased him in 1814, and other members of the Stark family were later laid to rest alongside the general. The hand forged wrought iron fence was added to the site in 1913. He, by the way, also was the longest living or uh, oldest general uh, of, the, of the Revolutionary War era are living to be 94 years of age and this is the little monument here and there is the gravesite right here of uh, this great late general and his other family members and here is the beautiful statue of Major General John Stark that was uh, sculpted by Richard Henry Richia of Massachusetts, uh, Qu born in Quincy, Massachusetts, died in Rockport in, in the early 1980s. He lived to be 98 years of age. Uh, now, Major General Stark, again, was born in 1722. In the 17, I think it was 51 or 52, he was on an expedition with a few of his friends and was captured by the Abenaki Indians and he was made to run through the gauntlet along with his friends and the gauntlet would be where braves on both sides indian braves on both sides uh would hold sticks and beat them try to beat them senseless but uh, general stark got the best of them and as a result of his uh tenacity and his uh, uh fierceness the chief was very impressed by his uh by him and he made him an, a member of the tribe and he later became, uh, he was involved with the French and Indian War, and it's where he got a lot of experience. And he was one of the important f military figures at the Battle of Bunker Hill, although it was a defeat for the uh, colonists, for the Americans. It was a, sort of a moral victory because um, the British suffered heavy, heavy casualties. And he, was, he played a very important role in that with his New Hampshire militia. And then he went on to Trenton and Princeton, where he played a key role in those battles. He went back to New Hampshire to do some recruiting, and he discovered that he was sort of passed by for promotion, where a lesser person, he thought, a lesser qualified person, got, got the uh, generalship. So he resigned, but he still de was determined to be, he was very patriotic, and said, I'll do anything to help the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and he later became a uh, leader of the militia of New Hampshire with the stipulation that he would not be under continental army control. So let me here read the little plaque here. John Stark, Revolutionary War hero. In the spring of 1777, the outcome of the American Revolution was very much in question. A large British army in Canada began to move south along the New York side of Lake Champlain as part of a plan to cut off New England from the rest of the colonies. In early July, Fort Ticonderoga in New York was recaptured in nearby Mount Independence in Vermont, was evacuated by the Americans. 
The British were now in need of the supplies and stores located in the General Depot at Bennington, Vermont. That state had only recently declared its independence and now asked for assistance from the New Hampshire against the invading army. With General Stark in command, 1,400 men enlisted for 30 days and departed for Bennington from Charleston, uh, Charlestown, New Hampshire. Upon their arrival, General Stark was given command of all militia and made plans for the battle with the advancing British. On the afternoon of August 16th, the battle began, and by nightfall the British were in full retreat without the supplies they, needed, they so badly needed. This victory by General Stark would prove to be critical. As the British regrouped near Saratoga, New York, many of the New Hampshire men were sick and their 30-day enlistment had expired. Nearly half of them left for home. On September 19th, the day after General Stark left for home to recruit new troops, the British attempted to resume their march south. They were not able to breach the American lines, and after several days, both forces settled in to strengthen their position. On October 7th, the British again attacked, and after heavy casualties, withdrew behind newly built barricades. Their only hope was to return to Canada. It was at this point that General Stark returned with his new brigade and closed off the last escape route. On October 16th, the British Army of 8,000 surrendered. The brilliant victory of General Stark at Bennington had set the stage for success at Saratoga, and he had returned in time for the surrender that was the turning point in the revolution. I'm going to take a little walk around the statue because there's a few things etched in the uh, base here. Now, in 1809, there was a reunion of the uh, folks who fought in the Battle of Bennington, and he was not in good health at that time. And still had a, still lived another 13 years. So instead of attending, he uh, sent off this toast. He said, live free or die. Death is not the worst of evils. And all that, he may not have been the first person to say, live free or die. That became the motto of the state of New Hampshire. And, and it's on their license plates. And this was his famous, famous quote during the Battle of Bennington, which actually took place on the other side, on the, actually in New York. Tonight our flag floats over yonder hill, or Molly Stark sleeps a widow. Well, thankfully, uh, he was successful, and he ended up outliving Molly. And then I handed just uh, the monument, this monument, the gift of General Charles H. Bartlett to the city of Manchester in 1948. And you're looking at the home of Major General John Stark. He lived here from when it was built in 1736. He was just a young man, I think about 14 years of age. And he moved out of here, according to the uh, little plaque, at, in 1765. It's located at 2000 Elm Street, which is just a short distance from downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. It is owned by the Daughters of the American Revolution and only opened by appointment, and I did not get an appointment, so that's why I'm not in there. But it's a great place to, um, to stop in and get a hold of the New Hampshire DAR, and I'm sure they would arrange a visit for you to see some of the uh, things in here and learn a lot more about this famous man. Here we are in Derry, New Hampshire. This is the original birthplace of General John Stark. And this is a little uh, plaque here on Route 28. It's interesting that it's just a short distance from the home that Robert Frost lived in for about 10 years, from 1900 to uh, 1911 or so, 11 years. Anyway, let me read the plaque here. Uh, General John Stark, 1728 to 1822. Rogers Rangers and Revolutionary Hero served at Bunker Hill and in Washington's New Jersey campaign of 1776 to 1777. He commanded the American Militia, which decisively defeated two detachments of Burgoyne's army near Bennington, Vermont, August 16, 1777. A stone marks his birthplace on Stark Road, six tenths of a mile east easterly on Lawrence Road. And there really wasn't an American militia. Militias were state entities. Well, here we are, folks, in Derry, New Hampshire, at the uh, site of the birthplace of General John Stark. And I'll read the stone here. Birthplace of General John Stark, 1728, the hero of Bennington, 
which took place in 1777, erected by the Molly Reed chapter of the DAR, which stands for Daughters of the American Revolution, in uh, 1897. And the DAR does a lot of incredible work around the country. Um, they own a lot of historic buildings and refurbish them and teach people about our great history. And we, we at Camp Constitution, uh, although we're much smaller than the DAR, we do the same thing. Our motto is uh, honoring the past, teaching the present, and preparing the future. And uh, we like to do these little video clips to honor the past uh, and let people know of the uh, wonderful contributions made by uh, Americans. And General Stark is uh, he's well known perhaps in New Hampshire, but not as well known outside of New Hampshire or New England. So we want to thank you for watching our video and please uh, subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to learn more about our camp program, visit our website, campconstitution.net. And you'll see all kinds of great information, our Sam Blumenfeld archive. Um, you'll hear information about it. We have a downloads, uh, all kinds of historical documents and, and important articles on different subjects and topics. And information about our summer camp, our family summer camp. So thank you for watching again and God bless you.